Good morning. This is Quinn of Quinn David Furnish Presents, the Bean Town Podcast, coming to you live from 817 St. Paul Street, Baltimore, Maryland, beautiful Bean Town, USA. How are you? What's going on? Saturday morning, January 27th, 2018. What's good? Been doing a lot more texting uh, in this past week than I usually do. You know, starting to to get a little social. Uh, days are getting longer. Coming out of the apartment a little bit more. Uh, seeing fewer movies by myself and uh, actually doing things with other humans. It's a novel concept. I went to the National Aquarium last night, which was wild half price friday nights which is great because normally it's 40 bucks and uh i don't know about you but 40 bucks for an aquarium that's kind of a little bit bougie um i'm gonna be having to make at least seven figures before i uh uh, start paying 40 dollars for an aquarium visit but 20 dollars you know i can uh i can handle that you know i might not eat any food the rest of this weekend, but I sure as hell saw some awesome fishes. Um, Biggest complaint, no killer whales. Um, You know, it's just one of those things you you kind of expect when you're at the uh, National Aquarium. No killer whales, though. Did see this one, oh, man, uh, Cayman, is that what it's called? I don't know if I'm saying it right, but I swear to God, this thing is like if a crocodile and Godzilla had like a love child it would be this thing it was like i'm looking at the google image right now it looks a lot like a crocodile alligator sort of thing but man this thing was it was nuts that was the only uh only like major reptile going on there was one exhibit that was supposed to have snakes but i don't know i was there at like 9 p.m and i think the the snakes had all gone to sleep so oh man we're here January coming to a close. I have, what, four or five more days until Feb 1 hits, and then I can drink again, which I haven't been, like, super deprived. I mean, there have definitely been some moments where I missed it, but for those of you who've been uh, keeping up, you know I'm in a dry month. Last drink I had was an entire bottle of champagne on New Year's Eve. Um, And, yeah. Haven't had a drink since then, so we're doing well. We're four weeks in uh, and a couple days to go here. Got to decide what my first drink's going to be. I don't know. I got uh, uh, my brother gave me a flask for Christmas, which was awesome, Um, but I haven't had the chance to imbibe in it yet because who's going to put, you know, like seven up in a flask? You know, it's just it's not quite as effective. So I'm looking forward to using that. Got a lot of stuff to talk about today. Uh, first and foremost, got to get this out of the way. Um, poet and I didn't know it. Vikings versus Eagles. Only six days ago, got to be honest, feels like a year. Um, I've been fortunate that uh haven't really been super down about it. If you don't know, the Vikings and the Eagles played in the NFC Championship game this past Sunday night. And it was one of the more... I don't know, just straight up dominating performances I've ever seen. Eagles won 38 to 7. Vikings scored a touchdown on the first drive of the game and somehow did not manage to score another point the rest of the game, which is pretty pathetic. It was an ugly game. I turned it off after the third quarter. Um yeah, it was uh it was pretty frustrating. Um the silver lining, I would rather lose like that than in, like, 2009 NFC Championship game against the Saints action or Gary Anderson action or even the Blair Walsh field goal versus the Saints. So got that out of the way. Um, Tuesday night, I had Russian food at a Russian restaurant for the first time in my life. Never been to a Russian restaurant before. I had a friend from grad school who was in town uh that was that was fun um and you know i, I think the the uh 
the kind of default thing here on the podcast would be to just tell a bunch of lame Russian jokes. But I don't want to do that. I don't want to like just resort to a bunch of stereotypes. Um, if I just you know tell those jokes, I would just be stalling the whole time. So um, I I did while I was um, at the restaurant. You know, there were some people at the bar talking and. Um, I try to avoid spoilers, um, you know, for, for major movies, TV shows, that sort of thing. I did, unfortunately, um, have my favorite, like, uh, competition game show spoiled for me. You know, I've been pulling uh, for, for Ivan uh, this entire season on Dancing with the Czars, but uh, I heard that he had a terrible performance, and uh, he got kicked off. So they lopped his head right off, just like in the old days, uh, you know. Hashtag hasta la vista, counselor, am I right? Um, but, you know, when it came time to, to order the food, I, phew, what the hell do I know about Russian food? I know you got the, the potatoes and latkes. Is that a Russian thing? I, I don't know. It, it, it sounds like it might be. Um, couldn't decide, honestly, if I wanted, you know, something sweet, something savory. Um, it's your classic stuck between a rock bottom and off in a hard place uh, type of situation. So eventually, I, uh, with the help of my friend, made up my mind, got the manchanka, machanka, M A C H A N K A. Um, it uh, is kind of like this, there's, there was chicken and kielbasa served with like these crepes, and um, it was all kind of in this, not really a, a sauce, but and it was. The consistency is tough to explain. Uh, I think there are like some like mashed potatoes as part of it. I, I don't really know what it was. It was pretty good. Um, honestly, in, in regards to my expectations, it kind of missed the marks a little bit. But, um, you know, it was fine. Um, uh, so dry month for me. I ended up having just some tea um, to go with my machanka. But... Uh, Got to tell you, those Moscow mules looked pretty appetizing over at the bar. So next time, go back there next weekend uh, and uh, get an alcoholic beverage. We were getting ready to leave. Um, I tried to pay the check, but uh, I tell you what, at this restaurant, <laughs> the checks pay you. It was nuts. Uh, anyways, it was really nice to be able to catch up with that old friend from uh, graduate school. Uh, hashtag Putin the commune back in communism, all right? So... That was the Russian restaurant. That was a good time. Uh, I don't know what it was called. Haka Baka or something like that. Um, Oscar nominations came out on Tuesday. Those of you know, following the podcast, I am a big Oscars fan. Um, This is going to be my third straight year where I um, watch... All the Best Picture nominations Um, in years past. So this is something that's interesting. So the last two years, um, first two years I started doing this, um, it was a situation where the the, the Oscar noms would come out and you have basically a month, a little over a month to scramble to watch all the Best Picture noms. And in years past, I think, you know, nine nine or ten, uh, nominees per year for Best Picture. I think you know, in general, I'd probably like seen two or three from the list, um, and then I would, you know, in that next thirty-five days or whatever, I'd have to um, go like seek out at movie theaters, go see a bunch of them. This year is completely different, um, and I hadn't even thought about this honestly until I said this thirty seconds ago on the podcast. Um, I. And pulling up the list of Best Picture nominations right now, I might have seen every single one before the nominations came out. So let's let's run through them. We got Darkest Hour, Gary Oldman as uh, Winston Churchill. I saw that once about I don't know two weeks ago. It was it was fine, a little slow pace, but it was it was okay. Um, by the way, this is not going to be my Oscar predictions uh, show. I will uh, I'll do something like that later. Um, I will review a movie, and and it's the last movie here on the list. Um, But we got Darkest Hour. We got Dunkirk, of course, came out this summer. Uh, Get Out, I also saw. Very good. Uh, Lady Bird, I've seen twice. Um, Phantom Thread, I saw last Friday night, uh, eight days ago for the first time. That was, I had some problems with the storyline, but overall it was great. Uh, The Post, which I saw on MLK Day. 
Shape of Water, which I have seen twice now, and then Three Billboards, which is a movie I want to see a second time, but I've already seen once. Um, and then the last one, Call Me By Your Name, which I have seen twice. So I didn't even realize this until I went through this list just right now for the first time. But yeah, I've seen all nine of the uh, Best Picture nominees before the awards even uh, came out. So uh, Calling By Your Name is what I would love to talk about just briefly. Um, It's a movie that has gotten a lot of hype. You're probably sick of hearing about it. Um, It's one of those movies, though, that absolutely deserves every accolade that it's been nominated for, that it's going to win. Um, For me, it's... So last year I was really big on Manchester by the Sea. This, it's kind of my version of that this year, Call Me By Your Name. Um, Lady Bird kind of fits that profile as well. But it's it's a movie that I I don't know. The, the two big things that it's got going for it are Best Picture and Best Actor for uh, Timothy Chalamet. I think it's going to lose both of them because I think it's going to lose Best Picture to uh, Three Billboards. And I think it's going to lose Best Actor to Gary Oldman. But man, the acting in this movie, uh, a master class. Timothy Chalamet and Army Hammer are spectacular together. Um, kind of a, an odd couple, but man, it works. Um, and then the other big one, Michael Stuhlberg, um, who I've talked about a little bit on the podcast in the past. He, was, he just kind of popped up out of nowhere this year, and he's in three of the biggest uh, or the best movies of the year. He's in The Post, he's in Shape of Water, and of course he's in Call Me By Your Name, which is um, his best performance among the three. But uh, two huge scenes that literally happen in the last 10 minutes of this movie. Uh, Michael Stuhlbart gives a monologue um, about uh, kind of emotions and identity and um, being yourself in a sense. And learning to be comfortable with that. That is just, I don't know, in terms of mo- movie moments that come to the like forefront of my mind, that, that takes the cake. It was just, it's one of the greatest, um, greatest things I've ever heard um, on, on screen. It's fantastic. Uh, and then the final shot uh, of the film, if you've seen it, of course, you know what I'm talking about. Um, it's spectacular as well. So, not going to do any spoilers because I know that there are plenty of people who aren't a movie going fiend like myself who are just going to red box it when it comes out or Netflix it or, or whatever. Um, totally worth it. I've seen it twice. I would consider going a third time. I, I might um, go again this, this week. Uh, really fantastic. Acting, amazing. Uh, score, also fantastic. Um, it just beautiful everything so calling by your name go check it out i love it um what else do we want to talk about here oh the uh the story of the flower chair um that is something that i i briefly mentioned last week on the podcast but um i figure i'll tell it now and I was uh, I was telling the story to a friend um, earlier this week who asked about it after listening to the podcast, and I realized I actually don't know <laughs> the uh, the origin of it. I just kind of know the the part of its history that's been handed down to me. Um, so growing up, had this like armchair, still have it. In fact, yours truly is uh, sitting in it right now. Um, but it's it's got a, a floral pattern, and consequently, always been. Referred to as the flower chair growing up. Um, my what, like sophomore year of college, my family moved um, to the state of Oregon from northern Illinois where I was raised. Uh, so they're getting rid of a bunch of crap. Um, I call the flower chair crap. That's, uh, that's blasphemous. The flower chair is basically an idol. Uh, but they're saying, hey, we're moving. We're not taking this with you or with us. Do you want it? I said, hell yeah. You know, I'm what, 19, 20 years old. I don't have any furniture. I have like a can of Hormel chili beans and uh, like a water bottle to my name, basically. So, you know, you start adding to the collection. I don't remember exactly what the situation was, but the way it happened was that I, I, 
I was going to be moving into a new apartment, but I didn't have the lease yet. So I had to stash this, uh, this flower chair at a friend's apartment in Lincoln Park where I went to school. So after I get my lease, I'm in a new apartment um, in a neighborhood about two or three miles north of school. And I got to find a way to get this flower chair up to the apartment. And, of course, you know, I'm 19, 20 years old in downtown Chicago. None none of my friends have cars. It's not a thing. Um, So how are we going to transport this thing? I'm not rich enough to, you know, shell out for a U-Haul. So in epic fashion, along with my former roommate, Benjamin Savage, Take the flower chair on the CTA red line. I will try to find a way to link the picture as evidence, as proof uh, in the comments here. Um, But, yeah, there's a picture of me sitting in the flower chair on the red line, middle of the day on a Saturday, I think. Um, Got it on, got it off, and walked it the rest of the way to the apartment after getting off the train, like half a mile. So that's the flower chair. Made it to my... Um, my sophomore year apartment and then moved it back to Lincoln Park when I was an RA and then moved it up to Rogers Park where I lived in grad school. Uh, didn't get a ton of use there, but I tell you what, since moving to Beantown, uh, this thing's my go-to. I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five chairs in the apartment. I would say I spend more than 99% of my time sitting in this chair and less than 1% of the time combined in the other five chairs. It's just, it's glorious. It's got everything you could ever want in a chair. Um, it's, it's beautiful. So you ever make it out to Beantown, be sure to stop by 817 St. Paul Street. And uh, it's kind of like sitting on Santa's lap, you know, except uh, uh, it's better and you get it year round. You know, it's not just a month of December thing. So that's the story of the flower chair. Uh, it's one of my prized possessions along with the tiger blanket, which I will be happy to uh, discuss in a later podcast. Uh, what else is going on? I, uh, I uh, founded this, this PTSD stress uh, research study on Craigslist. So I spend, you know, I'd say about 50% of my internet browsing time is spent on Craigslist. Um, You know, it's how I find my gigs. It's how I find my research studies. Um, Let's say you're just looking for a date on Saturday night. Hello, Craigslist, the way to go. Um, So I'm doing a market research study where they make you download this app. And I I swear to God, you do the same, like, test every day. You answer some questions about how you're feeling emotionally. And then you, you play this game which is really lame. It's like an, a, a freaking optometry test um, where you they, like, flash some words on the screen, and then you got to, like, press your thumb on... There's, like, two buttons at the bottom on either side of your screen, and you got to, like, press one of them, whichever one it tells you. And you do this thing for, like, five minutes, and five minutes doesn't sound like a long time, but each, like, little thing takes place over the course of, like, two seconds. So you're just going rapid fire... It's it's pretty mentally exhausting. I don't know if it's uh, how uh, how it's affecting my uh, my stress or whatever semblance of PTSD I have, but I got to tell you, I got to do it every day. I'm supposed to do it at noon each day, which means the second I uh, I finish up my podcast here, I got to do it. But uh, making some money off of it, I will uh, treat myself. I got to do it for two weeks, so I'm I'm two days in, and I'm already feeling a little. Uh, I'm kind of over it, so, but got to get that money, you know, got to get paid, uh, getting paid, getting laid, do the curls, get the girls. That is what my old friend, Matthew Kirby, Rafford Christian high school class of 2011 used to say, um, boy, what else is going on? Uh, I didn't give my, uh, uh, my, uh, listener discretion is advised tag. I, I don't think I, um, I have sworn yet in this podcast, but uh, I'll, I'll be listening back to it in about 20 minutes, and I will realize that I've already slipped in a, a couple uh, adult uh, terms. So let's do it now. Um, listener discretion is advised. We'll be using some 
adult language. And on top of that, the, the podcast is just objectively terrible. So there's your warning. Uh, shit, damn, uh, bitch. Let, let's just get the, the words out there um, into the open. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, that's that's what I wanted to to mention here. Um, yeah, boy, we got through that stuff pretty quickly. Uh, I was going to spend more time uh, on the Oscars, but I have multiple uh, multiple podcasts to, uh, to to discuss that stuff. Oh, here's what here's something I wanted to say: emojis uh, in in texting. You know, you you go on your iPhone, you're, you're texting, you go to the emojis. You can scroll to the right for like. I don't know, a solid hour, and you just keep getting more and more emojis. I tell you what, when I was growing up using a Nokia phone, um, we didn't have emojis. Here's what we had. We had colons. We had semicolons. (laughs) We had parentheses for the happy faces and the frowny faces. We had dashes if you're doing the, like, the the side frown type of deal. Um... And then we had the letter O. If you're like, oh my God, it's it's like scary. Wow. Um, now you go on the emoji list these days, and you can like find a facial expression for like feeling bloated. Honestly, there and there's a good three or four of those. There's like symbols for everything. There are flags. There's guns. I don't know. I don't know what kind of message we're sending to our kids these days, but these emojis got out of control. Oh, oh, this is the other thing. I have a friend who has an iPhone 10, and I don't know if this is specific to like the iPhone 10 or if it's just a software update and any phone like after the 6 or 7 or something can do this, but there's a thing where they they can send you like an emoji but it's it's a little bit larger but they like you you speak into it records your voice and then it shows the emoji like speaking your words and it's your voice but it's not your face it's the emoji's face that thing creeps the fuck out of me man like you sent me an alien one i felt like i was in close encounters of the third kind and there's like this poop one, which, by the way, the poop emoji is just total shit. It it looks like freaking like brown ice cream. None of my poop looks like that. Maybe that's a personal problem, but um, yeah, like not not completely on board with those things. I don't know why we need them. I don't know what the appeal is. In a similar vein, all the goddamn Snapchat filters. I have friends on Snapchat, and I haven't seen their real face since, like, the Bush administration. Like, hot damn. Let's cut it the fuck out with these filters and, you know, I, I just, the dog ears. You know, you go on Tinder. I, this happened to me literally last night. Um, you're on Tinder, and... um. Or no, no, no. This wasn't this wasn't a dating thing. This was um like an Instagram story. And it's like all dog ears. There were five pictures in a row, just like different facial poses, but they were all they all had like the dog ear filter and and here's here's the last thing I'm going to say about this. If I am on a dating app, and I'm trying to get a good look at you and, like, and I'm not talking about, like, being shallow in terms of body shape. But facial attractiveness, I think, is is a big thing for, for most of us. Um, how the hell am I supposed to know what your face looks like when you got a digitally inserted nose and ears and it, like, changes the color and, like, the lighting and stuff? I don't know what anybody looks like anymore. You can go on the internet and everything's a filter. Everything's got dog ears. I have a friend on Snapchat who like only uses the like like the floral wreath thing going around your head and it like changes your like makes your your cheeks nice and rosy. I'm just like 
this was this was a cool like fun thing to do for me for like two minutes the first time it came out on Snapchat and like the Instagram filters and stuff. But damn, like I don't know. Maybe I'm just a fifty year old man, but heesh, it's it's a hard knock life. We need more natural beauty. That's why I I don't shower, or shave, or take baths or anything like that. You know, I want people to like me for who I am in my my natural muskiness, if if you will. Um, cool. Let's uh, let's 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 do some advice here. Um, if you have any uh, advice, questions, dating, sexuality, uh, legal issues. Maybe you're just looking for some new recipes for dinner this week. You can, of course, send them to Beantown Podcast at yahoo.com. That's Beantown, B E A N T O W N Podcast at yahoo.com. Maybe you just have some uh, comments about the show. Maybe you're concerned about how much it sucks or how this podcast is legitimately a terrible waste of your time. Um, here's something else I want to say about that. So I've been, I've been pushing the podcast, um, just to friends, family, coworkers, and, you know, you, you, you start to see the, the benefits of it. I mean, I think my podcasts are up to like 35 likes on YouTube now. So, um, uh, I don't know. It, it was like number four trending, I think in, in the category of, uh, shitty podcasts from, uh, central Baltimore. So, um, yeah, we're, we're doing pretty well, but, uh, I don't want to get too big for my, uh, britches here. Um, but here's, here's the thing. The podcast is not meant for you to sit in front of your computer screen and just look at it for half an hour and make that be a half an hour part of your day. I get comments, concerns, from people who are like, oh, yeah, that would be cool, but I just don't have half an hour to carve out. And I'm like, are you kidding me? What about when you're cooking dinner? Give it a listen. What about when you're going to bed? Give it a listen. I mean, I know my voice is pretty damn soothing, pretty damn relaxing. Uh, wait till I uh, get my hands on a copy of Fifty Shades Darker. We're going to do some uh, some spoken word. Uh-huh. And and that's going to be nuts, but something to look forward to on a future podcast. Um, listen to it while you're commuting to work or commuting home from work. Uh, I'm not asking, uh, and this is not me. This is podcast in general. Um, you know, make it make it part of your day, make it part of your routine to to listen uh, to things. You don't have to sit there in front of your screen and and look at it. Um, just make it part of your day. Uh, other things you can be doing simultaneously. So, anyways, the rant is over. Advice. Hey, QCD. Uh, someone picked up on that. That was a Facebook nickname that, that popped up this past weekend. What are your tips for dealing with having a really lonely birthday? Oh, geez. Uh, I recently took a new job far away from my social network. With my birthday approaching this weekend, I have no plans, no friends, and no idea what to do. Birthdays are one of my favorite things and the thought of having a lame one is really tough. Thanks. Well, you came to the right person because I don't know if I have ever had a birthday in my life that is like just knock it out of the park, home run, really memorable. And that's not a knock on family or for friends. Well, some friends. Um, it's just, it's just like. Um, I don't know. They've never been a huge thing for me, so so I know what you're talking about. My last few birthdays, uh, let's see, one year I worked a 12-hour shift at work. I came home. My roommates had gone to dinner without me. That was that was fun. Um, another one, I did a, a food tour of Chicago. Um, so we hit up some Little Caesars, uh, Stan's Donuts, uh, White Castle, um, of course, had to go to the Olive Garden. Um, that was all self-planned. Uh, that was actually a pretty good one. Uh, let's see. Last year, I worked all day and then went home. I was cat sitting for a friend, and then I actually I did go and get a drink with a with my friend. Uh, that was that was okay. But but I know all about 
the uh, the loneliness aspect, the the not feeling like you have friends aspect, living in a new place. Uh, so my advice, um, I don't know. I guess try to try to just take a step back, um, realize you're not so special. You know, there's at least like two billion Asians in China uh, that have the same birthday as you. So you know, I guarantee not every single one of them is is going to the uh, the uh, the nightclub, the dueling piano bar, um, having free shots. You know, they're probably at home uh, playing Super Smash Bros. or something like that, um, or I don't know, eating rice and and going to bed. So I don't think that's culturally insensitive to say because I love rice. And no one is a bigger fan of Rice than me. Um, not to mention Rice University. Uh, go uh, go uh, Crimson Tide, you know. So, anyways, that's my advice for you. Uh, maybe go on a college visit at Rice. I don't know. Uh, it's a trip. It can be a fun, young, sexy, young 20s type thing to do. College visits by yourself. It's the new trend. Go check it out. You'll thank me later. That's the podcast for today. This has been Quinn David Furness presenting the Beantown Podcast. Uh, if you like what you hear, if you hate what you hear, let me know. Send me some advice, questions, beantownpodcast at yahoo.com. I will check in on you for a Super Bowl edition of the Beantown Podcast next weekend. And uh, I'll talk about some more Oscars, uh, maybe have some more Russian puns. And uh, anyways, that's it. Hope you have a good one. Check in on you later.